Welcome, Barry Trower, to White TV. Thank you. It's a very big honor for us that uh, you take your time and give us an interview. We are a big admirer of yours and your courage that you go out with the message that there are enormous dangers in uh, VLAN and uh, cell phone technology. And perhaps we could start with a short background that we understand your competence and how much knowledge uh, you could uh, collect that, that you know what you know today. Yes, I, I, I started in 1960. Uh, I studied microwave, all aspects of microwave warfare mm -hmm. uh, with the military. In Great Britain? In Great Britain, yeah. Yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. All aspects of microwave warfare. Uh, I learned about the dangers, how they can affect the human body, as well as, of course, radar and, and military uses. Yeah. That. And a small part of my work after, for 11 years, was because uh, microwaves during the Cold War were used as they are today, as stealth weapons. They are perfect weapons yes. because people do not know they are being targeted and any government can and has uh, targeted individuals groups of people streets whole streets of people uh, you can target people with low level over 18 months two and a half years and you can cause serious neurological damage, serious physical damage, and of course, cancers. And change the mind. Easily change the mind. <clears throat> At that time, whilst I was uh, questioning sort of captured spies or agents, uh, which uh, I emphasized was a small part of my work, um, <clears throat> I learned of the dangerous frequencies being used in other countries uh, because all countries were experimenting as they are today. I had a list of about 30 frequencies that could cause about 50 serious neurological and physical disorders, including cancer. cancer. <clears throat> they can induce cancer. Yeah. For instance, 6.6 um, pulses or modulations a second can induce sexual aggression yes. in men. Mm -hmm. uh, other pulses can make you feel suicidal. Other pulses can make you indecisive, lethargic, you can have pulses that will affect your vision because it interferes with the natural frequency of the eye. You can affect the heart quite easily. Uh, you can affect the glands. Make glance. a heart attack. <clears throat> oh yeah, yep. Yeah. You can. You can also affect the glands in the body and change the hormone levels that will then change the behaviour. So I, I did this for <clears throat> eleven years. I mean, I knew then about 30 pulse frequencies. Now they have a list of about 600. Uh, and they can be delivered to anybody, anywhere, by any government, uh, even people who don't like you now. <clears throat> uh, day or night, when you're sleeping, walking around, the technology is there. Uh, and it is a perfect weapon because you, most of the time you don't know you're being attacked. And <clears throat> a tremendous success for a government is if they pick on a lady or gentleman unsuspecting and they can pulse that lady or gentleman's brain, cause a known psychiatric disorder, paranoid schizophrenia. They go to a psychiatrist, uh, they are diagnosed, they are referred to a psychiatric hospital uh, where they can still be targeted. <coughs> uh, 
and they can spend the rest of their life in a padded cell or in a psychiatric hospital and that is a success. Without being sick? Without being sick. That, and if they just turned the frequency off, <clears throat> they would recover. Yes. Uh, that is a success. And we're not talking one person here, we're talking hundreds of thousands over 40, 50 years in many countries, hundreds of thousands. And the race is on to find the perfect microwave weapon where you can just, almost like a radio, tune the dial for aggression, suicide, whatever. I heard about that there are already technical devices. You hang it around your neck, a little pulled here, and then you can have some sparks and 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 uh, uh, steer. Have you heard about no, that? No, I haven't heard of those. No. We, we had in Stockholm in Sweden a horrible mm. uh, case some years ago where a man uh, took the car in, into the pedestrian's zone where mm -hmm. no cars are allowed in the old town of Stockholm and, and he killed a lot of people by just taking the car and, and going and uh, driving over them and he said to his excuse there was a man in the corner behind me who had this and he steered me. Um, there are ways, I haven't heard of that method, but I have heard of other methods <clears throat> where people can be reprogrammed to do, for an experiment, to do what the government wants them to do. And it, in fact, it's incredibly easy. Uh, you can break the average person down for total reprogramming in just 30 hours and that's, that's without pain, without hypnosis, without drugs. Uh, the average person can be broken down in 30 hours. <clears throat> Usually all they have to do is put you into a cell, no food, no water, no sound, you're, and you're in total darkness, absolute darkness, no sound, no water, nothing. And within 30 hours, you are hallucinating, really hallucinating. Then, <clears throat> and this is so easy, I mean, I could do it. Uh, and then with, uh, they call it synthetic telepathy, mm -hmm. microwaves, can go right into the brain yes. and you hear, you hear a voice yes. and the psychiatrists beforehand or the investigators, they would know a voice which you found comforting. Now for a lady it may be if she loved her grandfather, it would be her grandfather's voice. Oh, really? If you are religious it would be an angel or yeah. Jesus, or Mohammed, or somebody. Yeah. But <clears throat> when you've been in for 30 hours, and you're hallucinating, then the voice comes in. And of course, they can do this straight through the wall. Yes. The voice comes in, very soft, very soothing, very calming. Are you in trouble? I really am so sorry. Let me help. Mm. And over months, or years, however long it takes, <clears throat> you will come just to rely on this voice. And if you don't do what this voice suggests, then the voice disappears and you're back in trouble. Mm -hmm. So you, you learn, a bit like heroin, yes. you learn to depend on this very friendly voice. And if you talk to the voice and you're agreeable with the voice, you get food and you get light and you get... And then when you go home, the voice can wake you up in the middle of the night when you're sleeping and ask you questions and... Uh, and then <clears throat> once you are absolutely, totally dependent on the voice, like heroin, it can say now, the problem that you've been through was caused by... And it could be a religious sect, it could be a group of people. Yeah, they always come with a house. <laughs> <clears throat> a group of people, dark skinned, fair skinned, whatever, but it, it will be somebody. 
And they would say, now what I need you to do is help us defeat these people. And the next thing you've got is a bomber or a murderer or... And it can be done. It for, is. for example, <coughs> Mikhail Mikhailovich, uh, mm -hmm. he was convicted of killing the Swedish Foreign Minister Anna mm -hmm. Lind in 2003. Yep. Um, and um, he said, I had so strong voices in my head, yep. they gave the order to kill her. Yep. And uh, that was for me a clear evidence that he was mind controlled, that he is innocent, he was just a tool. Yep, but of course you can't prove it. Uh, and the government will say, you're mad, lock yes. him away. Yes. Um, but it's a success. Um, and if you wanted a single person, all you have to do with the person is say, well, the only person stopping you reaching a normal life is Mr. Smith. Mm -hmm. And as long as Mr. Smith is alive, you are going to suffer this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very easy. It's very easy uh, to reprogram a brain. Very easy. Yeah. I mean, religious sects do it sometimes mm -hmm. uh, to, to convince people. Uh, mm -hmm. Look at the big mass suicide we had uh, years ago. I forgot in America. Waco, Waco. Waco. <clears throat> um, it's very easy yes. to, to retrain a brain. Yes. Very easy. Yes, for me, my research shows clearly that Waco was also my like control <clears throat> operation. That, that, that is for sure. And, and even Timothy McVeigh, the Oklahoma bomber, yeah. he, he was uh, at those doctors making mind control and reprogramming. Yeah. But it, it, um, it's easily done. And of course, the, the difficulty is finding out which people are having their minds changed by an agency deliberately and those that really hates people and want to kill them anyway. <laughs> uh, but of course, it is a perfect weapon for that, and it's, it's been going on for a while. Uh, is it possible <clears throat> to use it on any human, or are there some groups which are more difficult to remote control? In that no, I, I think there are groups of people that it won't work on. I think so too, yes. Uh, and <clears throat> I know this I know this when I was, um, I, I use the word questioning, but when I was talking to spies and agents and international criminals and terrorists, um, it was over a cup of coffee. Um, and I spoke to them as if they were ladies and gentlemen like I'm talking to you. Uh, and if they wanted to talk, they did, and if they didn't, they didn't. But over the years, 11 years, there was only one that I never, ever managed to get anything from at all. <laughs> uh, there was one. Uh, and there are people who can resist. Had uh, you then a <coughs> clue how he managed to No, resist? but there was one, um, uh, and he, he was just totally, would not give anything away, absolutely nothing. And we would sit over coffee and have conversations, ordinary conversations about anything, the weather, football, anything, you know, and he would give nothing away. Was he from Eastern Europe? <clears throat> no, no, he's from Ireland. He would give nothing away. Interesting, because in Eastern Europe they had uh, advanced technology to shelter against mm. the mind control. But, uh, oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, but he would give nothing away. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that is a little comfort, comfort uh, because uh, they, they can't get anybody, but they can, the majority they can use and reach. I'm trying to think of the percentage. Um, I'm trying to think of the percentage of people who could be really, really programmed, um, and I can't actually. It's, it's probably quite high, but there will be a group who cannot be programmed. There will be a group. Uh, do you know about the goal? Uh, is there a goal to program anybody? I know um, with one of the programs over a 40-year period, they, they took uh, 500,000 people. Uh, 
I know that um, they, they had pregnant women, children over the age of four, Muslims, Catholics, prisoners, uh, drug addicts, um, cramps, servicemen, uh, the, the whole cross-section. But one thing they didn't publish was the failure rate. Mm -hmm. uh, they said we can cause this by this percentage, uh, but that they, they didn't publish the failure rate. They probably took the failures from one experiment and tried them with another. So <clears throat> um, it's unknown. Mm -hmm. It's unknown if you had 100 people, how many could be controlled. Uh, probably I would think maybe between 80 and 90 could be controlled. Maybe one in 10 mm. couldn't. And uh, in Great Britain, one uh, may uh, suppose that it is MI5 controlling the technology. Um, we, strictly speaking, we should say England. England. Because the, the Scotch, the Irish, the Welsh, I've never known any of those to do what the English government are doing. Uh, they seem to act on their own and as far as I know, they have never ever done it. It is the English government scientists, mainly from Porton Down, the big military, government military research centre. Yes. <clears throat> now, to give you an example, we have scientists in England and the people who control them and these are all unelected people. <clears throat> in 1960, and this went to court, in 1960 they took 20,000 young fit servicemen and women and they injected them they said they were flu injections mm -hmm. and they injected them with toxins, poisons, chemicals. A lot of them died, a lot of them suffered an agonizing life with joint problems, uh, cancers <clears throat> and 50 years down the line, just a couple of years ago, 50 years down the line the survivors, and there were only a handful, the survivors managed to get this to court. Not a single government scientist was named. They have total immunity and anonymity from the law. We have government scientists who are above and outside the law, and they have permission to kill people, government scientists, and I think this is wrong. They have permission to kill people, <clears throat> and they have, and they've been taken to court, but the government refused to have them in court. They settled out of court. The same was with the CIA. Uh, MK Ultra is a good example. <clears throat> the CIA with the Canadian government the McGill University. They were taken to court. Again, it took 50 years. Only a few people survived, and they refused to go into court and talk. They said it was government secrets. We're not going to tell you. And the survivors were paid a bit of compensation, and that's it. Not, again, not a single government scientist has ever appeared in the dock and they have killed hundreds of thousands. Yes. Do you know something about who is behind it in Sweden? Have you known <coughs> something about that? No, no idea. But if they're linked to England or the CIA or mm. Canada, and we have a scientist from Australia uh, who was, was on one of the videos last night, I'm trying to think of his name, um, AD. Uh, AD. Mm -hmm. um, who was in the program. So, but, and this is the problem, we have scientists who are outside the law. Yes, that's a problem.
And when you have scientists who can kill people and they cannot be prosecuted, then you have a problem. You know who is giving the authorization uh, to uh, permit the killing? Well, it's not the government, because the government are elected mm -hmm. and they only stay for four years. It has to be somebody above the government, maybe the civil servants, maybe the civil servants in MI5, MI6, uh, the Foreign Office, the uh, military, <clears throat> but it, it has to be somebody who is unaccountable to the law. Yes, um, what I heard in my research when, when I looked into the case of the murder of Lady Diana, uh, they say uh, it is uh, uh, Prince Philip, the, the husband of the Queen, who is in charge of MI5 and MI6. Could well be. I mean, I heard when Lady Diana was uh, um, uh, dating Dodi Fayad, mm -hmm. the young gentleman Dodi Fayad, <clears throat> and she was becoming, it looked romantically involved. Yes. The one thing the British government, and I know this, would not tolerate was a member of the royal family marrying a Muslim. And being pregnant with them. And being pregnant with because a Muslim. Because the Queen is a state uh, <clears throat> yeah. church chief and that yeah. would be trouble. So there was no way they were ever going to allow that. Yes, that's I heard as well. <clears throat> From a British agent who is one of my <clears throat> clients, he, he told me over a beer, yeah. we're not supposed to allow. Yeah. And, and I heard also that the driver was mind controlled. It is possible. It is perfectly possible. Yeah. Absolutely possible. No one will ever know the truth, but um, I suspect. But uh, you're not the first person to say to me that Prince Philip was behind it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. You're not the first person to say that. Because when all is said and done, the royal family is a business. Yeah, the England, institution of power. It is a business. And the royal family, they have one aim, and that is to keep the royal family. No, and, 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 and to, to keep power. It's oh, and power, yes. yep. It's not so much money. But, but no, not money, power. but they will stay the royal family. Yes, yes, yes. I see that as well. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, that is very interesting. Do you know about technology giving shelter against those microwaves going into the brain or making a cancer or heart attacks? How do you mean giving... Um... Uh, uh, um, that, that, you, uh, that you are not um, open for, that, that you uh, perhaps have a, um, a device that you hang around the neck uh, giving a shelter against this? Right. I don't know how they can work. <clears throat> For the simple reason that when microwaves, if I were microwaving you, I would be sending quite a wide beam to your head. And the mi uh, microwaves, like all waves, travel in straight lines. Mm -hmm. They all travel in straight lines. Mm -hmm. Now, if the microwaves are going into your head from a beam, like if I was shining a torch yes. into your face, if you're hanging something around your neck, that will not deflect a torch beam down mm -hmm. to your chest. So the only thing I know that can deflect an electromagnetic wave at the speed it's going, at which is the speed of light, unless you have your neutrinos, which theoretically can exceed the speed of light. Yes. Uh, the only way you can deflect them is to have something with an enormous gravitational field. Um, the only thing known to me in the universe that powerful is a black hole <laughs> in deep outer space. Yeah, but we can't hang a black hole around You can't hang a black hole around your neck, no. So how something here can, a tr can stop a wave traveling at the speed of light going for your head? I don't know. I'm not saying the people that make them are lying. I've never tested one. 
and they may work I can't see how they work and if they do I would love an explanation yes. I really would yes. well, we heard that the East German Stasi the Secret Service, Secret Service the DDR yeah. uh, they had a credit card like uh, uh, pieces they could uh, put beneath uh, the collar here yeah. and that should have gi be given a shelter um, you have never heard about that? The only way I think something like that could work is if they transmit outwards. If you, transmit, if you have something and it is transmitting outwards, then you will have what in the war, what is known as jamming, because you could jam radar. If you send a frequency back and it matches the frequency coming in, you have destructive interference mm -hmm. and destructive interference the waves cancel each other out yes. and you just it ends up as heat mm -hmm. uh, that is the only way I know to destroy a wave mm -hmm. is, is to jam it so if they're given something that, that sends out a little frequency that will jam it and that will work mm -hmm. but if it's something under the collar I don't know how it would work yeah yeah have you heard about scalar waves and other form of, of waves uh, compared <coughs> to electromagnetic? Yeah, um, now, with my classical physics degree, a scalar is a measurement on a ruler that doesn't move. It is yes. not a vector yes. that does no move. No direction. Yes. Yeah, but I do know that <coughs> Tesla waves can now be described as scalar, which are your neutrinos. Yes. And I know when I did the uh, university, the nuclear and atomic physics, I, I can remember to this day doing calculations with neutrinos. Oh yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I can remember doing calculations with neutrinos. And I, and I can remember it, I can remember the lecture, because <clears throat> the calculations came out faster than the speed of light. Yes, exactly. And I, and I asked the professor, and I said, this is impossible, I must be wrong. <laughs> and he said, she, that's, I, tell, oh, I must forgive me. And she said, no. She said, they will come out faster than light. They are particles which, as far as we know, can exceed the speed of light. Um, we, we debated this and we, we left it open that maybe they existed and maybe they could travel faster than the speed of light or maybe there's something we don't understand and maybe they do travel at the speed of light but they're not electromagnetic waves they're particles um, and it may be possible to accelerate a particle because theoretically if you now start to travel faster and faster and you reach the speed of light what happens is your mass increases and your mass will increase and slow you down and if you go faster and faster your mass increases more and more and more but you can never reach the speed of light they find this with the cyclotrons yeah. uh, that the particles their mass increases <coughs> now maybe with your neutrinos even with the mass increasing they can still accelerate or maybe the mass doesn't increase and they can accelerate mm. uh, and nobody knows the answer to that in the world uh, but I, I do know that they are so fast <coughs> and so small uh, and <coughs> the, the professor said to me traveling from outer space they can go right through the planet through the center out the other side and not interact with a single atom they won't touch anything they won't touch the atoms in the ground they won't touch the atoms in the lava the magma the iron core they come out the other side they won't touch a single atom in the oceans and they whiz straight through uh, and I thought 
you know, it's just almost unbelievable. That's why those <laughs> neutrino traps were or are so big because yeah. they try desperately to catch them. Yeah, um, and, and they, they probably can catch them. Yes, but there must be a kind of technology. My research in mind control um, uh, gave me a clue when uh, the victims told me, the targeted individuals, the first thing we do when we feel they are microwaving us, we go into a Faraday cage. Yeah. And that is not a, a success because they are still targeted. And that, how is that working? Because usually an electromagnetic wave is not passing through a Faraday cage. Mm. And then I got the hint uh, that, uh, oh no, they are using scalar waves based on yeah. neutrinos. And then, of course, a neutrino can pass. Yeah, because it has no charge. Yeah. So it, it can go straight through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so in, in, in some way, not every technology, but some of the technology mm -hmm. uh, targeting people must be based on scalar waves. Yeah, uh, and there may be, I mean, to my knowledge, there are 16 subatomic particles. They may be using different subatomic particles as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I would agree with you, um, that is possible. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, one of your big messages is that the cell phone technology and the Wi-Fi, the, the wireless computer, which we have, is very yeah. practical. <coughs> and there are a lot of danger connected to this, and people don't know it. There is a lot of danger. I mean, uh, you know as a scientist, microwaves react with water, and we are made of water. Our brains are made of water. So any microwaves going in the body must react with the water. And when you react with the water, the water will change, the, the, the water goes around the cells, the, the water-based layers, you change the surface of the cell. Mm -hmm. And when you change the surface of the cell, you change the signal transduction and the cell cycle timing. And it goes on to the DNA and you can change everything mm -hmm. by microwaves. Yes, <clears throat> yes. And, and therefore people get cancer and other problems when they live close to this broadcasting oh, yeah. yep. uh, uh, devices on, on, on the roofs, on the houses and so on. Mm. And, and, and in your speech yesterday yep. you, you came with compelling evidence that it is connected to that. Yep, there, well there are 14 epidemiological studies, one even carried out by the industry itself, and they said this causes cancer. Uh, there are five high court cases that prove this. So, <clears throat> no, three in Austria, one in Italy, and where was the other one? Um, I can't think of the country or the other one, but there are five to my knowledge, and 19 other legal judgments where proof wasn't required scientifically, a magistrate or a judge who's not a high court judge or a mayor listened to the evidence and said, turn it off, take it down. Mm -hmm. yes. And then it was better. <clears throat> then it was better. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, you told us yesterday about the farmer in Africa. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is, is this the one to do with the ants or the one to do with the American military base? There were, there were two. Yeah, but okay. The one with the ants. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it, um, yeah. He, he came to me and said, would you come to the field with me, Barry? And I said, of course I will. Lovely gentleman. Uh, and I went to the field and he said to me, what do you hear? And then I said, well, there's a sort of an animal baboon in the trees over there. Uh, and there's something moving over there that I hoped wasn't a lion. Um, and... Uh, and he said, you shouldn't be able to hear me speak. He said, normally all of these bushes would be covered with bees pollinating. And he said, as soon as that transmitter went up, I lost my bees. <clears throat> he said, um, within a few months, my ants were lost. They disappeared. And we know that microwaves affect bees enormously. I've given a whole lecture on just bees. Mm -hmm. 
We know that the navigational system of ants is based on the Earth's magnetic field, the same used by bats, birds, fish, other creepy crawlies, <clears throat> um, and the microwaves are too powerful for the navigation system to work. It's the cryptochrome mechanism in the brain. It's too powerful. Mm. And so as soon as you put an animal in a magnetic field, they get lost okay. uh, and they can't come back or they will leave to find an area where they feel comfortable again. Mm. And this gentleman, and this is right across this country, uh, he lost all of his fruit, which means he's now got to buy fruit, or which means the country has to start importing fruit. And he's lost his trees because the ants, whilst they crawled all over the plants, they, li they licked the sap. Mm -hmm. They didn't eat the plants. And any locusts or insects that landed on the plants, uh, the ants attacked them mm. to protect their plants. So he's, he's totally lost his farm, and that isn't one farm, the, all of the farms are suffering, which means the country now has to start importing food because it's not growing it, and it has to start importing drugs because people become sick, and it has to start importing um, medicines because in this country they were all vitamin C producing plants and once you lack vitamin C you're looking at scurvy so now you've got to try and prevent scurvy yeah. <clears throat> and the countries that are causing the problem in this case the United States they are the very first people to come in and offer aid. Yes. Problem, reaction, solution. Yep. <laughs> and then, in, re in return for the aid, military base, land... Mines. Mines, yep. Yes, that's what they want. Yeah, that is really horrible. Mm. And was 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 also extremely disgusting for me to hear yesterday that especially women are targeted and uh, that they, they suffer more because the, the, the follicles are, are deformed. Well, yeah, I mean, and they do know this because experiments were carried out, and I, I've read the papers, experiments were carried out in the Cold War on pregnant women uh, with different levels of microwave irradiation uh, to see uh, how many genetically deformed children could be born how many miscarriages? Uh, I know with the miscarriages, it was 57.7% of women had miscarriages from low level radiation. Um, and so when they start putted, putting Wi Fi in schools, and you've got little girls in schools with all of the eggs in their ovaries that are going to be their future generation. You know, I contacted the authorities and said, you know, you can't do this because you're going to produce genetically deformed children and miscarriages. Mm. Um, and uh, they totally ignored me and they're still putting Wi-Fi in schools. And the evidence is there that uh, the, child, the, lady, the, the girls, when they get married and they have children, there is a very high risk of a genetically born girl. But the DNA in the eggs, in the follicles, they suffer 10 times more than all of the rest of the DNA in the body. So even if they use a safety level, it's, it's a factor of 10 out anyway. <laughs> And it's irreparable, it can never be repaired, that particular mitochondrial DNA. Which means that if, if you have a girl with the DNA damage, her child will get the damage, and then her child and her child, right the way down the female line, 
until there are no more females left in that line. And, and this is what they're doing. Uh, and they know with Wi-Fi in schools, because a girl can be irradiating her ovaries from the age of five, if she goes to university, to 24, 19 years. She's sitting in front of Wi-Fi and it's transmitting straight through the ovaries if you look at how they sit. And how was the boys, the sperms also can... Well, boys are slightly different because girls are born with all of their eggs and they can be irradiated from birth. Mm -hmm. Boys will not produce sperms until puberty. Mm -hmm. But in saying that, there are several papers that now show that with Wi-Fi, the sperms are also damaged. Yes. So you have the sperms and the eggs. And if, of course, if you've got a damaged sperm and a, a damaged egg, um, it, it's horrific. Yes. Uh, the thing is, they know this. And the only reason they're putting Wi-Fi in schools is because if you're going to put it into, let's say, in Denmark, 10,000 schools, I don't know, it's cheaper to use Wi-Fi than get workmen to drill holes to put the fiber optic cable or the phone cable through. Mm. You save maybe a million pounds. Mm. And that's why they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. And it's cheaper now to save a million pounds and have genetically damaged children in 35 years time. Yeah. <clears throat> I also heard already more than 10 years ago that don't give a cell phone to your children. That's true, yep. Because yep. What, 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 why is it especially dangerous? Well, children, <clears throat> children are growing. The nervous system is growing. The bones are growing. The immune system is growing. The brain is growing. Everything in a child is growing. Mm. And if you, if you put microwaves through growing parts of the body, you can affect the growth. You can deform the bones. You can alter the chemistry of the bone marrow that makes the immune system. You can affect the way the brain works. Uh, and these are growth, so if you change it, it's going to be changed for life, unless it can repair itself. <clears throat> so what you're doing is you're effectively changing the growth of the child. And a, a child isn't fully grown until they're 28. 28. The last thing to form is the clavicle, the shoulder blade. So, really, if you want to be strict here, a child should not be exposed to microwaves until they are 28. And um, I, I had some thoughts about what can we do about it? How can we improve it? And I had uh, an interview with Professor Konstantin Meil in Germany, mm -hmm. who was... Uh, physics professor and uh, uh, the leading researcher in scalar waves because he uh, uh, made the experiment from Nikola Tesla, the Wardenclyffe Tower experiment, in a very tiny scale and sells this mm -hmm. so that everybody can, can follow that there are a special kind of longitudinal wave which we call also Tesla wave. And he said to us, um, if the uh, cell phone industry would use only scalar waves uh, to communicate with p people in a cell phone, yep. then you have a kind of peer-to-peer -peer connection directly from the ringer to the receiver. Yep. And because it is a longitudinal wave, it is not going around anywhere making no electrosmog and uh, making it more healthy. And uh, nobody can eavesdrop on it because this is not a transversal wave going everywhere but only between uh, those two persons yep. so the secret services can't listen to us any longer and he says in this scalar wave you can transmit enough energy to the cell phone that you don't need a battery 
uh, because uh, scalar waves have a lot of over-unity effects because they collect the neutrinos on their way. Uh, and um, uh, this what Tesla showed uh, already in, in the 1890s when he had light bulbs 42 kilometer uh, glowing without the cable between uh, the, yep. the generator. Uh, so uh, for me it sounds perfect and I know from some Germans who, who, who made their own cell phones on scalar waves mm -hmm. between Berlin <coughs> and St. Petersburg, it yep. was, worked perfectly and then uh, the guy uh, went from St. Petersburg to Australia, so it was through the earth and it was perfect connection, <laughs> no battery needed, so it is more cheap, it is uh, more health uh, and they were so surprised, some of the frequencies already were occupied. <laughs> so somebody here on Earth is using that technology already. I mean, if that works, it'll be brilliant. Yeah, yeah. If that works, it, it will be brilliant when it comes in. But uh, as you said yesterday, it may be 20, 30 years before the whole system is up and running. Yeah. And the mobile industry, they've only, they're still putting up their transmitters. Yeah. So they're not going to take them all down at the moment. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, I mean, you're right, if, if it does work, it's brilliant. But if you say the Secret Service can't listen in, I can't see him getting a license to do it. Because the beauty for the Secret Service is that they can watch, listen, and check every single person in the country. They, they can even watch you when you're in bed yes. through the wall yes. and see how many people are in bed with you. Yeah. Uh, when you're, if you put your cell phone down and you're talking to the doctor or a lawyer or somebody, they can listen to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. they, they can, if they want to, they can listen to every single thing you say and watch everywhere you go. 24 hours a day and there's nothing you can do. They can even watch you go into the toilet. Yeah. <clears throat> there's nothing you can do to stop them. Yeah. And I've heard that <coughs> in every uh, cell phone signal there is a kind of noise also. Yep. And that they can modulate the noise and put in information to, to influence your mind or also get back information. Oh, that's that. done. Yeah, they're using that in shops. Um, and a, a, a shop was taken to court, uh, and I th it was in the United States, um, with this system and, and using auditory hallucination mm. or synthetic hallucination. Um, a shop was targeting people coming into the shop, yeah. uh, and the inventor was told that it would only be used to stop people shoplifting. That when they came in, if they were going to stop, if they wanted to stop them shoplifting, they would send a message saying, we're watching you, don't steal that. But as soon as the inventor finished, <coughs> the shops uh, and maybe the governments, but somebody said, well, hang on, if we change the message, instead of saying, don't steal that, buy it, we will make a profit. And a shop made, I think it was $600,000 using this in nine months. And they were taken to court. But the government argued, from the transcript I had, the government argued that the system was harmless and no laws were being broken. It is not against the law to send somebody a message. And it was not a subliminal <coughs> message, it, it was... Uh, he, uh, Auditory, he, uh, syn um, uh, what the, synthetic telepathy. Mm -hmm. uh, they're arguing that it's like music. The message goes into the brain and you hear music. Um, uh, and the lawyers couldn't find a, a charge because it wasn't against the law. And the government scientists said, well, as far as we're concerned, all of this is safe. Because they use it, they have to say it's safe. Mm. And since then, it has spread to other big chain stores. And we don't know now how many chain stores are using this. 
Um, but now there are big chain stores and fast food outlets that are targeting certain people to encourage them to spend more money. And that's amazing. Uh, and, and you think, well, we're back to where we started. I mean, what else can you ask them to do? Um, supposing, just supposing, <clears throat> the owner of a shop gets one of these devices and takes it home. And however the message is sent, maybe from a, a tape or it'll be electronic voice these days, um, into, supposing the owner uh, sends the message through the wall to his next door neighbour saying uh, I admire you, come and sleep with me or move because you're not wanted here uh, or you can send it across the street I mean somebody's only got to buy one of these and start using it for their own devices and, and then you, we're back to where we started where you've got people hearing voices uh, and, and they're getting confused. <clears throat> well, when they modulate this information on the carrier wave, mm -hmm. do you know whether they modulate the amplitude or the frequency? They can do either. either. Mm -hmm. They can do either. Um, if you modulate the amplitudes, you will get more energy. If you modulate the frequency, you will get more vibration. Uh, you can do either. If it depends on the energy, you'll probably end up doing both. Mm -hmm. uh, but you would, with the noise, you can also put in anything from the one to the 600 pulse frequencies as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you could make somebody feel incredibly happy and indecisive or decisive uh, so they will buy something or do something uh, <clears throat> you, you can also put in the pulse frequencies mm -hmm. and uh, uh, shortly before the Olympics in London now you yeah. gave a fantastic interview to Lars Drugold from Denmark oh yeah, yeah I remember that and uh, <coughs> you, you, you touched uh, the Olympic Games and uh, said it, it would be perfectly easy to support a sportsman. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so easy, I could do it. Yeah. Um, it is because of the, the known frequencies, if you target somebody, uh, and this comes from, uh, I will say, an intelligence case. I, uh, there was a researcher who was um, murdered. I will say murdered, but it wasn't proven. Uh, but everyone knows he was murdered. <clears throat> he discovered something, and for what he discovered, he was murdered. And somebody from this country contacted me <clears throat> to say, do you know what he was working on? Do you know the pulse frequencies? Do you know everything? And I said, well, yes, as it happens, I do, because I've been reading about that recently. And they said, would you make a statement? Because he's dead, he can't appear in court. Would you make a statement for the court? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. So I wrote an enormous statement with the evidence, sent it to the country. And it was to do with targeting ministers of the government with pulse frequencies. Because if you, if you have a minister that is going to make a crucial decision and you can target them, you can probably make them change their minds. It's very easy. And at this time, the Olympics were on and somebody said could, could Olympic athletes be targeted and I said easily uh, from any transmitter straight through the wall to their bed when they're sleeping and all you have to do is target them with a specific pulse frequency that will make them lethargic disinterested uh, it's easily done, very easily done. Maybe feeling a little bit fluey. Mm. Um, 
and all you have to do is <coughs> take away the ability to slow them down by maybe a second. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. Slow them down by a second or two. Yeah. Uh, you can even do it whilst they're running. You can do it from a block of flats whilst they're running. You can just target the brain mm -hmm. um, or the muscles depending on the frequency or the heart. You can actually make the heart not beat properly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the, the gentleman you said when he was at my house, he said, is it possible? And I said, it is easy. Absolutely, all you need is a transmitter that will transmit into a beam, so you only get the one person, not the rest. You want a microwave beam, you can put it on a carrier wave, uh, which will help the beam. Uh, you can use a high-powered lens like they use in sniper rifles for the beam and all you have to do is target all you need is a, not even a clear view of the athlete because it will go through walls um, and you can target somebody and you can slow them down and any country with the technology not only can you slow people down but you can speed them up and speeding them up is easier if you target the adrenal glands, you will get adrenaline, natural adrenaline produced in the body. That has the effect of speeding up the heart, speeding up the reactions, because if, if somebody came through this door now to shoot you, your adrenaline would come out straight away, you'd be in your fight and flight mode, everything will be ready. You can induce that in people. Mm -hmm. So you can actually produce adrenaline and it would not come out in a drugs test because adrenaline is a natural body substance mm -hmm. so it wouldn't come out and of course if you're a little bit scared as people are athletes before the starting gun adrenaline's flowing anyway you're just increasing it. Mm -hmm. So you could slow one person down who may be your biggest rival and you can speed somebody else up mm -hmm. And it is easily done. Whether they're doing it, I don't know. Uh, you would need a detector somewhere near the ground to detect it. It could be detected. Um, you could get them when they're asleep. <clears throat> but yes, it is possible. It is possible to manipulate the Olympics easily. It, it's so easy, and I'm certainly not a clever person compared to some of the other people, uh, it is so easy, I could do it. Mm -hmm. Because I was amazed that uh, Britain were on the third level with the medals this I, year. I wondered that. <laughs> I, I thought, how come we've done so well? Uh, <laughs> it's very unusual. Yeah, yeah. Look at the statistics. Uh, and I, I was looking and I thought, well, we've beaten Australia and we never beat Australia. And Germany. And we've beaten Germany and we've beaten Russia. And I thought, you know, we, we have never been this good. And, 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 and I mean, in my own childish mind, I thought, I wonder if anyone's beamed these athletes while they've been working. Um, and of course, it, it's, you can't prove it. It, it, it. it is the perfect sports drug. Yes. The perfect drug. Yes. It induces a natural body substance. Perfect doping. Adrenaline. Cortisol, adrenaline, the, the perfect body substances, it won't come out in a drugs test. And you can give somebody a good second or two, and that's all you need. And uh, I first uh, thought it could be the advantage that they are at home. But then I looked at the <coughs> statistics. Mm. In the last London Olympics, they were also at home, but they were very lousy in the yeah. results. So it yeah. couldn't be that effect. Yeah, I remember that. The White City in the, was it the 40s, 50s, yeah. I remember yeah. that. Um, uh, and you're right. <clears throat> and I did have a childish thought when I saw us on the score table and thought, we've only been beaten by the United States and China. Yeah. And there's something wrong there. Yeah. It is fishing. <clears throat> so, 
But maybe, without taking it away, maybe the athletes are that good. Maybe they were beamed, I, I don't know. Would you like finally to address something to the audience? I think <clears throat> what we need is we need to find uh, honest people with enormous power. The only way, I think there is only one way out of this. <clears throat> I think if I can get a message to people that the world will sit up and listen to, if I can talk to kings or queens, which I have done, if I can talk to kings or, que kings or queens and if we can have a king or a queen who is prepared to stand up for the children of their country, prepared to stand up for the victims of illegal experimentation, which are their people, they are their people, if they are prepared to defend their people, and they are prepared to make a nuisance and demand government action, because the kings and queens, although they have no, in some countries, no power to control government, they can make a nuisance of the government. They can call press conferences and they can say, I do not have the power to stop you as a government, but I am your king, I am your queen. <clears throat> and I want you as members of the press to investigate and stop ordinary children, human beings, being targeted by illegal government scientists and killed by the scientists. I want my judges to investigate and bring these people to trial. Uh, I want Wi-Fi taken out of schools because I do not want my people to suffer any more genetic damage than nature would ordinarily cause. Yes. So a king or queen who was brave could do that, could call a press conference and could say to the press, make these people stop. I want you to hound these scientists, follow them home, get some papers, find a whistleblower, print what they're doing, Let's get everybody on one side and get these murderous killers stopped. Yeah. And a king and a queen can do that. Yes. And if I can see a king or a queen and I can give them the proof and give them the evidence and they care about not only their future but the future of the people they are the king and queen of. They are like the mother and the father of a family. Mm -hmm. We are their family. Mm -hmm. And if they can say, I will not have my people tortured by government scientists just for research. And I will not have genetically born damaged children because somebody is too lazy or too greedy. greedy not to drill a hole through a wall. And I am going to encourage investigative reporters to get to the bottom of you as difficult as it is for them. They have my permission to do anything they want. We will have this exposed. And only a king and a queen can do that. Mm. We've got to go to the top and if you can send this to the king and the queen, or the queen here, I will be very, very grateful, um, or any king and queen. They have got to come in to protect their people and their country. And we've reached the stage where a gentleman, and I agreed with him sitting there, it may have been you, um, <clears throat> lying in government is now endemic. All senior government officials lie all of the time. <laughs> Lying 
is so commonplace it is now normal yeah. it is normal to lie mm -hmm. they wouldn't know the truth if it jumped up and bit them on the backside everybody lies all of the time it is endemic right through government I said yesterday when I was talking when I started questioning spies and people the biggest task I was given was to investigate corruption in the senior London police and the senior London government with their access to the, the expensive May, Mayfair clubs like the Playboy where they would meet international criminals and gangsters and other people <clears throat> and 45 years later look into our papers now the two organizations being questioned and targeted by the press for corruption are the police and the government we have been corrupt for 45 years it is endemic <clears throat> governments do no longer govern they do not represent the people they represent industry and they will kill people to please industry mm -hmm. they will murder people children embryos fetuses infants they will murder anyone to please industry and we need now and there is only one way to stop this <clears throat> we need a king or a queen to talk to me I can put them in touch with other kings and queens mm -hmm who will verify what I say in their country yeah. and hopefully we need a king or a queen that will call the press the best of the best of the investigative reporters and say publish this hound these people get to the truth and I want everything in the papers until you stop the murders you stop the genetically damaged children that is the only way and if they don't do it we are going to lose our countries and we are going to lose our people we are going to lose the human race because of the acid rain the carbon dioxide the, the trees the everything which the microwaves are destroying uh, we're going to lose everything and my message is, and I'm sorry it's so long, my message is to the king and the queens, you have the status, let me see you use it for the benefit of the people. You have the luxury, you have everything you want, you have everybody bowing and kneeling to you, turn the tables for once, just once. Mm -hmm do something for us you can save your people and that is what I want from the kings and queens thank you very much we are very grateful my pleasure you and if you can show that to your queen I'll be grateful yeah but in Sweden we will show it to the king yeah okay. to the king yes, <clears throat> yes. And we have a very good king in Sweden and if, if, if like our royal family there are armies of people to stop people like me getting access if you know an investigative reporter who is fearless and can tell the truth and can publish it get, it, get it published word for word I will do my best thank you very much my pleasure sir my pleasure